Hi everybody, uh, my name is Eleanor and I work for uh, Staffordshire University. So I'm going to today talk about one of our programs that we do called Step Up to HE. Um, just explain a bit about what Step Up to HE is and how we sort of use uh, information literacy in those programs. Okay, so it's a program that's been running for a few years now and the point of it really is to get people who might not have been in uh, education for a while or who weren't even considering university to come along, do a short program, get qualification, it's a free program and then come back to the university to do their degree and a bit later. So I've got a little bit of a film about it, it's a bit cheesy so I'll just leave it to run for a sort of 30 seconds just to tell you about what the setup is. The Step Up to HE allows students the opportunity to study within higher education before actually starting a full-time degree. It's a very successful course that uh, in the last four years has seen over 300 students come onto campus. So it, it provides them with the information, it provides them with the tools and the skills that they need to study at higher education. We have a good number of students on the Step Up to HE course which may have been out of education quite some time. No such thing as a little Every single one is so individual. That's what makes the course so brilliant to help teach on. I mean, the eldest person I've heard was a picture of 67, and the eldest person has been in 1618. How is that difficult? I mean, the amount of life experience that 67 year olds have compared to 17 year olds have is completely different, so their point of view is definitely different. And yeah, there's a thing between the two. Okay, so that just kind of gives you an idea about um, what was. The, uh, the course is made up of two modules. Sorry about that. Just to explain what the course is. Okay, so really what they're trying to do is we're trying to get a bit of belief in the students to think that they're going to be able to do this course and they're going to be able to do a university course. So what we're trying to deliver to them is some sessions that are accessible, that are interesting and that are informative to them. Okay, so instead of thinking about trying to deliver quite complicated ideas, things that students are probably going to forget anyway if they're coming back in September, maybe they've never even used anything like a database in their work before, we're just trying to give them some confidence themselves. So that's the first basic idea about what Step Up is, to give you an idea. Okay, so we are, you might recognise this in this picture of this book on the front of you all on there. Um, so, We've been involved in, it, in the Step Up for about four years now and luckily we've got three uh, sessions that we've, we've got for the students and in those three sessions we do a session on finding information, we do a session on evaluating information and we do a session on using information and this is all from the work of, um, uh, it's a chapter in your reading the information literacy book, this is all the ideas from there. Okay. Um, so we always team teach the sessions, so each session is run by myself and somebody else who works at, uh, in the library or from study skills, one of our departments, and we've also got student ambassadors. There's lots of people helping out in those things, so it's myself and a tag team partner. And we try, I don't even really use the word teaching, it's really about we, we do sessions with people and then they start working with each other as opposed to me showing people. So that's Jeff Walton who used to work at Staffordshire University, he's just moved up to Northumbria. That's how we would start a session, 10 things you want to know about the library that we're afraid to ask. Get people in groups, start getting to think about some questions to pose for us. So in the first session, we focus on finding items. First of all, we start using just the library catalogue, but now we've moved up to using Summon. And that's been introduced in about the last 12 months. Um, and that's really starting to explain the difference between Summon and all the other search engines that they would use. And we've used the line Academic Google, which I think lots of other people have used as well. Um, and it shows that we can get access to resources that are either aren't available if you use um, Google or another search engine, or you might get asked to be charged for. These are often things that we might talk about, take for granted, but they're not for people that cannot step up. They don't know anything about this, and they don't know anything about how to find resources. Also, that put at the bottom there, that's one of my answers to that, um, students if they knew what a journal was, and they said, well, it's a type of diary, isn't it? Which is just another, you know, why, why wouldn't you say something like that? So we'll start to talk about, in that first session, about what does peer review mean? What is an academic journal? What is an abstract? What is a citation? There are a lot of terms that just don't mean very much, 
but we just start to introduce it. It's not very, very hardcore. It's not really, really complicated. It's just an opportunity to start talking about those things. So if they're looking for information about a particular subject, we will go, right, let's try and find out about how to do, how to write an essay. So we will find stuff on the and the library catalog. Go and find the items on the library shelves. Session two, um, we are to a critical evaluation session for students. Um, one of my uh, ex-colleagues now works at GIST called Anthony Beale and um, used to run a pedagogical approach looking at a particular website which you've probably seen before called martinlutherking.org which you take a look at and it's one of those that's really great for, as an example because all you do is you just give them the web title and you say what can you make without just looking at that title then you say what about the Google description what does that tell you because it says something like it's great educational resource for students and teachers alike, and then uh, looking at the website itself. That's a great exercise, but then you get to a point where you're like, oh yeah, I didn't really know what to trust, so where do you go from there? Where do you go to say, right, well this is actually where you can get some decent resources, somewhere like Summon, which is what we're talking about here, and that's great to find full text stuff, the peer review stuff that we've introduced in session one. So we do have quite a lot of uh, feedback and things for that as well. So that is martinlutherking.org. Uh, that is your Google web page result. And you can see at the very bottom there, you've got the Martin Luther King Children's Start and Examination. So that web page has been knocking about for years, which is a really poorly designed website. And it's been just used as an example of how, um, how you can get a racist website that's just full of really rumour and things that aren't true, all that sort of thing which you may or may not have seen before, that is still on the front page of the Google search for Martin Luther King. So people will look at that and say, what is that doing on there? Because it's, you know, just understanding how Google gets that on, on the front page. So that's really interesting, looking at that from a sort of critical evaluation point of view. And then when we look at it on Summon there, you can see that you've got full text uh, articles from academic sources. So on the left hand side there, that's a uh, full text from um, history today, which is something that we uh, subscribe to, that will take you straight through there. So you can see that that's an, an article. And that's fairly straightforward and obvious, but that does make a huge difference when we demonstrate that. And also, as we've said before, it's not so much the we're showing you, it's doing a practical demonstration with students, they're having to go themselves. So that's what we do. And then we, can, we do sort of take and post it notes, as we're quite obvious when I'm doing feedback where at the start you might say something like, what is critical evaluation, get people to write down what they think it means, then ask them at the end, write, write down one thing you've learnt, then uh, watch them for the session, uh, what would you want to know in the future, all that sort of thing, but it's very, very immediate, doesn't rely on any sort of technology going right or wrong, and you can see there we've got, that does say, use some for researching, not for nauseating, not to do good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just an example of uh, the sort of thing that we would get from feedback from the session. And then finally, the third session is about referencing, so how they would use the information that they've number one found in the first session, number one two, also you know, looked at, critically evaluated, evaluated and decided what to use. So again, they work in groups, the students, and we've got a range of resources that they've collated, and then we ask them just to reference. Some of them might not have any idea of what it is, so they'll start working together thinking about all the components that are required to make up the reference. Um, we want to get these ideas about searching, references, information skills in the students' minds. But bear in mind it is the sort of course they're doing before they start in September, so they're not going to make everything that they learn. Um, but we also um, introduce some things that they find just absolutely incredible, which are things like putting all your results from someone into the folders, and then you can actually put them in the Harvard reference and format. So it's like, whoa, that's amazing. Um, and it enables them to do that. We will say, make sure you check those references, speak to your lecturer, ensure you can do that, um, <laughs> make sure they're correct. And they just find that incredible. And also the fact that I think in Summon 2, there's going to allow for the person, is it 2, 2.0, whatever some of the new version is going to be called, allows you to create a personalised version of folders, and they're not session specific. So once you've got your um, folders all sorted, you don't have to lock off. Um, you know, they're all lost forever, so that, that should be a very good time. Okay, so that's what's happening. So what we're going to do in the future, just in terms of step up, is just to continue using it and just to say that it's not an overwhelming um, sort of version of a federated search or all these databases. 
it's easy to use, the results are fast, and we're looking forward to the new summer. And then these are just some things that we're um, sort of thinking about, that we've got three sessions with students, which is really, really great. It's really great that we get that those times. Um, but we need to develop material for shorter sessions aimed at different um, student web base, because this is a very specific cohort of students. Perhaps developing more quizzes, adding badges, uh, that sort of thing that we're thinking about for other students. And I think that is everything. So I'll let that any questions. Or oh, not, if I just have to go. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Do the students do this programme in relation to their course? Okay, they run it throughout the year and sort of get a sort of cohort of people to do it. So they were coming to do this um, um, five week course, this step up course, and then the start of September. They would usually do it about March time, but they've actually started running them pretty much throughout the year. So they're doing it like in March time, right? yeah. and then the real academic study starts. Yeah. So that's right, they'll do the short course and hopefully that will encourage them to think, this is good, this is, I might, I think what they're trying to do is make people think, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yes? Hi, I was wondering if you tie in your science survival kit. Ooh. Okay, this is a question about our assignment survival kit. This is something we've developed at the university that gives a sort of rundown of the work that's required to complete an assignment and it gives a calendar to be able to do that, saying at this time you should be doing this, you should be looking at that, and we can set reminders to people. So it's kind of like a structure to do it. The only thing we would do is when we're talking in session one about finding resources, is we would talk about the assignment survival kit. Often there'd be a question about the ten things you want to know. We always put everything in everything we're going to say anyway, because it's usually in those questions. Um, but there'll be a question about um, I'm worried about getting my assignments done, or where do I start? And you say, right, this is a good place, so we'll just point that out to them. But that is available for the assignments to have a kit. Then we'll check on to you as well. Yes? Um, so it was how do, we, how do we cope with different levels of IT skills and information? Yeah. So, um, by the fact that there were some students there who were still scared of touching a keyboard. And we found that with the, the way we do the work, because it's in a five-week course, we've got this time for students, is that they start to get to know each other, they start to work together, and all of our work is group work, and people start helping each other. So a student who is there, who is very confident, will automatically, without anyone asking, say, oh, I'll just do this, or you do that, and people then start working together. So that's the way. I haven't been standing here saying, I will teach you how to use a keyboard or I will show you what, if you press that, it's not going to explode. It's just by other students. And that's quite powerful. And as was discussed before, that it is, makes quite a huge difference. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There's no cost at all to the students, it's a right. free course. And the second question is, presumably if, it, if it's in March, then they have to be another sixth form, yeah. so they get time off school to attend? Um, if there might be people coming in the summer that are oh. students, but most people aren't sixth form students, oh. most of the people are, maybe people who have children, have not been to university, or different, so from different sort of areas, and we're working quite a whole area being in Southern Trent, Staffordshire, so this is an area where we're trying to get people into learning that just not have the opportunity. So you say if there's demand, the yeah. demand, do they then come to you and say, I want to do something? If there's a demand, the, the tutors that are there that are on the film, they're uh, Toby and Rose who lead the programme, 
they would say we're going to run some additional sessions in June. Would you like to do some sessions in week to make sure the doctor is prepared to be available? So I would do it and then I'd find somebody else from my department who would team teach. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs>